In this video, I'm going to tell you about the three-step process to becoming a local market celebrity in your local geographic market almost overnight. Hey, my name is Sharon Trivata. I serve as the president of Real. We are the fastest growing publicly created real estate brokerage in the world. And everything that I share with you today is totally free. It is my way to give back to our community and to you so that you can take these ideas and crush it in your market. These are the three steps to becoming a local market celebrity almost overnight. And it starts right now. Today, I'm going to take you through the three step process of becoming a local market celebrity almost overnight. Uh, I call this the local market domination approach, and it's got three steps to it. And here's the big reason for it. Uh, most businesses are local, most of them, right? Most businesses are local. And I'm talking to the service based businesses. I'm talking to the real estate agents, the mortgage brokers, the lawyers, the pool contractors, the dry cleaners, the local market stores. If you are a local market service provider, this episode is for you. Because I think that once you figure this out, you can do it in an insane uh, scale and value perspective. Because once you build it tight in one local market, so if you're a real estate agent and you build it tight in one local market, uh, they call it a geographic farm, you can take that and replicate that to another farm. In fact, uh, Uber did a great job with this. When Uber wanted to launch, they went into San Francisco, they built this playbook around San Francisco, they lit up San Francisco uh, for Uber market, and then they went to Los Angeles. They took the same playbook, they took the updates that they had, and they lit up Los Angeles. Then they went to Austin. They took the same playbook, they deployed into Austin, and they lit up Austin. Today, I want to give you the three-step process to becoming a local market celebrity almost overnight in any market. And this is actually not going to be that expensive. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to give it to you from the perspective of a real estate agent so you can actually see the services that are available and then use that for any service business that you have. But just this, these three ideas alone will, will dramatically help you. So, so here we go. The first one is a content strategy and I, it, it's, it's inevitable, it's impossible if we are not making a hyper local content right now. If you are a local market service provider in some way, you have to, you have no choice but to make local market content. And organic posts are good, but just making the posts and figuring out how it gets discovered, bad idea. Our job is to force discovery. I'll say it again, our job is to force discovery. So if you're making a post about a local market and you're referencing a particular business and on Instagram tag that business in fact even attach that business as a co-collaborator to that post because now when the business sees that you have a post that tagged them they're also trying to get the reach they'll say oh my gosh look at Sharon he's doing something he tagged us now we should share this what happens there is you actually get newer eyeballs on your stuff you get discovered faster without being discovered faster there's almost no hope because you're just hoping and praying that the 90 six followers that we have are going to like watch our stuff and go buy our stuff we want to we want to get discovered so the number one reason to post uh, hyper local content is to get discovered and get access to new audiences especially in that marketplace overall could you pull off uh, things like local market hashtags and a couple things like that yes I don't think it hurts I think having 97 hashtags on a post doesn't do you any good but if the, if the hashtag is really specific like hashtag Laguna Beach and you know that I follow the Laguna Beach hashtag. If you see that, I'm probably going to see every post in Laguna because it makes it makes sense. So if you use the hashtags tactically and also tag the local market accounts uh, well, you will get free discovery like you've never gotten any other any other way. So getting free discovery is to tag or tag them as collaborators so they can help you get discovered faster. We are crazy not to have, not to be a part of these local market groups. Uh, two ideas there. Number one, you have Facebook groups. Facebook groups that are local market groups as in uh, Laguna Laguna Beach residents, right? That's a local market Facebook group. In that group, if something goes in that group, there is a good chance that uh, almost everybody in that local market will get to see it. So if you have a really good piece of content and content, not ad, content. If you have a really good piece of content and you tag or shared it within that group, one, the group moderators are really excited. The group, uh, the, the, the members of the group are really excited and you get to build your brand on someone else's audience and distribution and they love you for it. In fact, they may even invite you to be a moderator of the group. Whenever you create great local market content putting it in in front of eyeballs with the right target people really really helpful that's why if you're in a group making friends with the um 
with the local market with, with the group administrator is is great and so they love you for it but as long as you're not promoting and taking away from others and you're actually providing content it's good because time on brand is the new call to action i'll say it again time on brand is a new call to action every single real estate agent or mortgage broker or local store that i see wants to actually make a call to action oh if you want to know your home value like text me or if you want an updated rate let me know or if you want your a quote on your pool do this you don't have to do any of that that's a call to action people already know that what they want to know is they want to know who you are and what you do and when you stand up in front of everybody else that is your brand so getting distribution is getting time on brand time on brand is the new call to action once you get more time on brand you are the number one choice and they will find you I've actually had people dig uh, uh, search out and find my assistant's email address which is not even public to find to find a way to get a hold of me like that's wild if you think about it right Right? Time on brand is the new call to action. Uh, I, you got Facebook groups. You also have you also have uh, next door groups. Next door is not really great about not not really forgiving for promotion. I think you can do some ads, etc. But if you have if you're in the next door group in a community, I would offer just being very good from a content delivery perspective because what it does it allows you to get discovered again, which is great. It gets shared, and what you get is time on brand. Time on brand is a new call to action. Instead of trying to like find a way to get somebody to call you to schedule an appointment to show them a house or get a home valuation or whatever what you want is you want more people to have more time on your brand because you then become the number one choice in their head right and here's number three um my friend byron lazine was talking about this and he said you know why don't we start doing more green screen videos you see a lot of green screen videos but do green screen videos with hyper local content now maybe right th there is a there is a tesla there's a tesla service center um that is coming on you know a mile from my house that's cool but now that they're replacing a lowe's and putting a tesla service center in there if that was the green screen video and you shared that into the local facebook group put it in next door people love you for that you know why because time on brand you're the one that's providing them that information so any green screen videos that you can do that also provide hyper local content not broad-based national content i think it dramatically starts to help build your brand in that in that marketplace so that is the content strategy number one is to actually utilize uh, organic posts local groups and green screen videos to drive uh, more time on brand ideas because time on brand is the new call to action let me give you the second one if you want to put some money behind your post the paid strategy is actually a pretty good one but you don't the nice part is in today's world you don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars doing that you can do that for five bucks right but what, is, what it does is it gets a targeted approach to getting more impressions on all your stuff. And so uh, I work with uh, Nick Corvases at Scale Lab Group. They do an amazing job on all our paid media marketing. So I'll link them up below if you want to work with Nick and his team. Uh, you want to promote winning organic posts. So let's say you've posted organically every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? And you look back and you're like, wait a minute, that Wednesday post, that did really well. That had 10 times the engagement as all my other posts. What you should do there is the organic side has already told you that that Wednesday post is a winner. The organic side has already told you that's got more traction, 10 times more traction than every other post that you have. So putting $5 behind that and targeting your, your core local market is a great idea because the algorithm has already proven that that piece of content is already performing right so a little bit of money behind that allows that to grow which is which is ultra powerful right uh, number two the uh, content and retargeting uh, sometimes we think that if somebody watches a piece of our content reads a blog uh, downloads a white paper that's they're showing intent in some way right if they're showing intent in some way say hey if anybody read this blog post right here i'm going to retarget them with another video uh you can very easily go to youtube click retargeting and, and find it but finding people that actually look at one thing and give them something more after is powerful just like when you are on uh nike.com and you're looking at a new pair of jordans right and you for some reason don't buy it you're going to constantly see these ads come back to you why they they are they know intent they know 
context. So they're giving you more of the same. More of the same is a really good thing. So if somebody has uh, researched homes uh, uh, in your real estate and researched homes on your website and you want to show them more homes, that's a good idea. If someone has researched something about uh, taxes and you want to show them more about taxes, that's a good idea. So taking a piece of content that you get traction on and actually retargeting around it, really good paid strategy. And the nice part is uh, paid's helpful because retargeting is significantly cheaper and retargeting at a local market is even, even more cheaper because it, the algorithm does not have to work as hard to get the same amount of results right? Uh, I'm a big fan of anything direct to lead magnet that is of ultra high value. So for example, if, if you're a real estate agent and you knew, and you went around to 10 local establishments, uh, and you got, and you built yourself a little coupon book or a coupon PDF, all you had to do is set the PDF up and you can run low budget ads to your marketplace the entire time. Right, and you can say, "Hey, uh, download the 10 best deals in Laguna Beach right now, 100% free." So people go in, they go to your page, they see who you are, they put in their email address, they get the the, the coupon book. Once the book is given to them, uh, they can download the book and they can use it in local market restaurants because then they take that PDF in. It has your name on it, so that the local business is so happy that you gave them this. But in now, you're using the local businesses and your local environment as the lead magnet, but you're just paying to get the traffic in there. Now, not only do you get the lead, very few people want to get a Laguna Beach uh, coupon book if they don't live in and around Laguna. Like that's that that is the perfect hand raise for intent overall. This could also be a hey the the seven secret beaches in Laguna Beach, right? You can do the secret spots. Most people don't know the secret beaches, the secret parks, the secret burger joints, the secret taco trucks, the secret the secret secrets, whatever it may be. If you are the one providing that information, now you can squeeze them with a little lead magnet on the front end. It's a really powerful thing because you're using the existing environment to get your lead squeezed, which is super powerful. And now, especially if it's a local market business, et cetera, now they get to they get to actually talk about you because you drove more business to their to their business, which is which is fantastic, right? So the paid media strategy is really powerful. Promote a winning organic post. Uh, if there's a good piece of ton content, try to retarget them. And number three, direct a lead magnet magnet may be a coupon book or a secret spots to see because now you know uh, we call it dog whistle copy dog whistle the only person actually interested in that piece of content is the person that is so perfectly your target avatar and that is insanely powerful right that's number two the paid market strategy here's the third one I think if you just did the third one, you can um, you can get local market domination really fast, and it's an event strategy. And when I say event, you're not you don't have to throw a block party. <laughs> okay, you don't have to do that. What you can do instead is to do events in a much smaller, much smaller way. Uh, the first thing I talk about is the idea of a list building event. And what I mean by a list building event is a database building event. And the idea with a database building event is let's say you did a food drive, right? And essentially you did a, a flyer on every door and says, Hey, uh, we're doing a food drive for our troops, wherever. Uh, if you would like to donate in this food drive, we're taking dry food, dry cans, uh, red vines, whatever. You can just leave them outside your door, but I just need you to text me your you know, name and email. That way I know that uh, we should do a pickup. If you did that, now you have the name and email addresses. You get to do a food drive and they're happy that you did that. And now you've built a list of people in the right database for you. At the end, what do you need? You need a list of people in the, you need to build your database. So it's a list building event. You could do a food drive. I've seen electronics drives. Uh, People just show up, door knock and say, hey, we're doing an electronics recycling. It's on Saturday here. We are completely paying for it. Heck, they don't even pay for anything. Someone can come in and do that. And you say, please sign up if you'd like to come. People sign up, they come, they drop off their thing and you're good to go. Now you are viewed as a goodwill bearer and you've got, you've built a list along the way. I like doing small events like that because what it does is it provides a value to the community. It's not a heavy lift on your part, but you still get the end result, which is you get to build a database based on that, right? So that is the list building events. Second, I'm a big fan of community events. Community events are very enduring. So uh, my favorite thing for the doing thing for the community is especially like if you're a real estate agent or mortgage broker or a pool contractor in that local marketplace is to do something for the kids. If you did a movie night, right and you literally brought a movie night setup you did like you know a movie you had popcorn you had kids sit there and watching their blanket they will the family will love you for it most of the time people will even uh, sign up and not come 
who cares? At the end of the day, they, they, they knew that they signed up, they knew that it didn't come, and then you can send them uh, an email after with pictures, etc. But you now you get to build some goodwill in this process. You can get an ice cream truck or a Kona ice truck or a taco truck or whatever, even though that may get a little expensive, but now you get to build a great event because when people come there, they, they come to you, they say, thank you for doing this, and you get to actually build an event that that connects with people kids in German live events change lives right but you get a chance to do something where you get in, in an efficiency perspective bring everybody together and build a database around it because that's how you get local market domination the third is my favorite is um, my this is my favorite of all is doing a JV event when I say JV I mean joint venture I love partnering with other people because I don't like doing stuff just by myself I want it to be enjoyable and uh, semi-social for me too so maybe I go to my friend who yeah, I, I'm making this up. Who's a local pizza place? So the local pizza place and me, we co we cross market to an event. We say, hey, we're gonna teach, uh, we're gonna make the the kids pizzas in X neighborhood, and um, yeah, and we're gonna show how kids how to do that, and we're gonna show how kids how to sell that. Please uh, sign up. So they bring out 15 pizzas. Uh, they he teaches how to do. We market. I I you know I network. And then now you have a joint event. Now all the monies that came in, if there is money, or all the signups that they came in, now you get to share in those signups together, and your ability to share the lists with your joint venture partner. Joint ventures are easy to do because now you get to build a relationship with a business in the community, and you get to deliver something cool to the to the marketplace that is very hard to forget and is very very hard to beat. Right? Events are extremely powerful, especially when there's a nice twist to them. Uh, I have noticed that when it helps the community or it helps their children, you get a lot of endearment out of it. Uh, I will I will tell you this. Your event is better than being at someone else's event. I would much rather do a baby Sharon event than be a uh, a key part of someone else's event. Yes, you can do that. That's good by supporting other people. That's fine. But I would much rather you have at least one of your events because the more you are organizing it, the more people will rally around you overall. All right. So number one, uh, content, organic posts, uh, local groups, and uh, green screen of local content. Number two, paid media, which is uh, whichever post performs really well that, that week, put some money behind that or if content is good uh, get the content to match the retargeting or number three direct a lead magnet like a coupon book or uh, the secret sites to see that allows you to build a local market base that is the paid strategy and third the event strategy is you do an list building event like a toy drive or a food drive uh, a community event like a movie night or a joint venture event where you partner up with someone else when you do this Right, you have three strategies, none of which are expensive. You have, if you want to have extreme local market domination, this is the way to do this. This, this is my favorite three-step process to becoming a local market celebrity almost overnight. Hey, if this was interesting to you and you like this, just do me a favor, just take a screenshot of this, post it on Instagram or whatever, tag me, because I think that uh, that way I'll know that this was interesting to you and I will get to make more of this like it in the future. Appreciate you being on this episode with me. I'll catch you on the next one.